first of all i would thank uh, organizer to having me here to share uh, my experience with the mooc and especially in this crisis period why moocs have become even more important than ever so uh, therefore uh, i am uh, talking uh, my uh, topic is all about promoting social distancing through moocs and engagement in social learning because social learning plays very important role we will know in next few slides so as you see here pandemic versus infodemic so obviously each and every one of us has experienced the pandemic so now i will bring you a focus on what is infodemic pandemic is about the disease caused by virus or any pathology occurring in vast population of in country and international this is pandemic what is infodemic infodemic is the information killing and creating panic in the population so basically all our lives the people who are living now they it's had divided into before covid and after covid because covid not only devastated our economy but it has changed so much here after it has changed our lifestyle it has changed our behavior with our colleagues it has changed our mindset so before we never wanted to visit a doctor online but now we want our doctor through telemedicine same thing uh, our traditions our cultures everything has been changed because of covid but there is one more important thing that is infodemic infodemic is something created by human beings so here it goes what is infodemic too much information including false and misleading information in digital and physical environment during an acute public health crisis like now it's happening in covid leading to confusion risk taking and behaviors that can potentially harm health and lead to mistrust in health authorities and public health response why i am talking about this is this is the key why we want to promote moocs because we feel i as a educator as a medical doctor as a uh, professor i think we need to empower people we need to give knowledge correct information then they don't get into misleading information so needs during pandemic situations what are our needs definitely we need social support we need personal education we need to improve the management and improve the quality of life and also uh, promote or remote uh, what to say telemonitoring and self care during pandemic situation but to doing all these things we need to have some basic knowledge of ourselves and that is where i am trying to promote moocs be at social distance but you get your knowledge you cannot keep at home waiting for everything to get normal then go back to your classes go back to your schools it doesn't going to work like that so right from your home you should try to get access to the right information so engagement through moocs because again it's my personal experience moocs play very important role in disseminating information accurate information because here educators stop and then the learners comes and they interact to each other so here mostly it's positive uh, what to say emotions will be playing and you will be learning a lot so why moocs definitely we need healthcare awareness if you don't know about your healthcare people can put all stupid things in your mind misleading information which can be potentially harmful for us and exploring methods for self empowerment and engagement ubiquitous learning anytime anywhere so now you don't need to see your time okay 9 o'clock i need to go to my college no whenever you want just get online and get see your videos see your uh, reading materials and start working on that and uh, the most another important thing uh, key factor is widespread learners in our previous moocs we got people from 85 countries 76 countries of learners enrolled in this and what happens 
once they watch any uh, video or watch any activity and then they start discussing in my country it is happening like this in our situation we do like this that is called social learning in moocs social learning play very very key role so we should not forget or underestimate social learning and these are our various uh, moocs like social media in healthcare and internet of things for active aging digital health for cancer management artificial uh, intelligence for healthcare challenges and opportunities and challenges so these moocs will be running time to time rerun so definitely if you have not gone through them you can just register for the next time and you can join and i talk a brief about how internet of things will be useful for aging again empowering elderly with the chat tools so all my focus of this talk is how we can empower how we can teach them uh, either elderly or adults or children to be a uh, master of themselves don't get involved in some misleading information trap and become a victim of some uh, misinformation misleading information and disinformation and the social impact of aging uh, people perform better when they are well informed and what happens when patients see their doctor notes so these are the few key points which we were discussing in this course and role uh, patients role in modern healthcare ecosystem and now we need to bring uh, patients role in this epidemic healthcare ecosystem and same thing social computing uh, iot wearable device for healthy aging uh, we have done sort of introduction of healthy living with technologies gamification education the future of healthy living with technologies and uh, this is what we managed to publish and another course this was my first moocs which is very interesting which talks about social media in healthcare and there uh, literally i uh, also publish a paper on lessons learned and what i did is i conducted a survey on digital health literacy and uh, if you see where do you find information to make decision about healthcare if you see all different uh, variables doctors and health websites these are the key uh, what to say point of information source of information so even more than doctors people are going to the uh, websites and knowing about their diseases so just you go to internet and find whatever you want you don't even do ask you don't need to go somewhere so this is how it's working and this survey is done in 2010 now it's 2020 so this percentage has even drastically enlarged okay uh, then there are uh, information seeking uh, websites uh, where you can get information for healthy people or newly diagnosed or chronically ill people so these are the statistics uh, they got so there are wide range of websites available so just you can go and you get enough information but the source of information is the key so you cannot randomly go and search and whatever published in internet cannot be true you need to know that so that is exactly where digital literacy comes into play so we conducted a survey i will be showing in few slides is it easy to find information yes it is easy is it easy to judge the information you find can you take action seeing the information online that is not so easy that is what our survey tells us survey in the course so online survey entitled social media in healthcare about 1500 learners students means they are not like young people there can be anyone who registered in the course uh, among 4100 uh, uh, learners that enrolled in the course about 20% of lear learners responded to the survey and we asked 10 questions five regarding finding online information and five were judging the information they found online 
And we had about their demographic of age, sex, profession, all those things. I will show those results. The 10% of the surveys were extracted from the HLEQ, the, you can see the survey, consortium of European Health Literacy Survey. And these are the results. If you see, uh, more than 50% are from Europe, followed by Asia, I can say, uh, Africa. Uh, yeah, and then 50% uh, of them were medical related professions. And if you see females were 64%, and if you see the frequency, how often they use internet, most of them were frequent users of the internet to seek uh, uh, information, uh, health related information. And the results, if you see hard and easy, 61% is easy and almost like 41 is hard. If I compare, I can't say and hard to find the information, but to judge almost like 90% is hard and can't find or can't say. And only uh, like 36% uh, uh, is uh, saying easy. Then, uh, then these are the five different questions we are asked regarding finding online information and about judging. Actually, you need to uh, club this red and green because these are can't say and hard compared to easy. Then you see uh, in judge uh, results, you see it's so much hard or they can't say whether they can really take any decision if they find any online information. Whereas finding is always clear cut, it's always easy to find. So findings. So uh, what we found is information, uh, people started finding online information relating to their symptoms and treatment, advantages and disadvantages of different treatment opinions, finding online information on epidemics, retrieving medical uh, medication related information, emergency department assess, assess the reliability of social media, vaccination and diet related data, getting ability to discern when to visit physician for a regular checkup. But in this COVID period, this is very important. When to go to your doctor, because you cannot go whenever you want, because if you go, you have high risk of getting uh, in contact with uh, patients with uh, COVID. So you need to be very careful or maximum you should use online uh, or uh, telemedicine, teleservices. And the conclusion is health consumers found it easy to search and find health information, but difficult to judge. Health information seekers with low health literacy and other related skills influenced how they evaluate the trust uh, and trust online health information definitely depend upon their basic knowledge. And health literacy has largely ignored, health literacy has been largely ignored and needs more education efforts at different stages with global strategy. That is why we are talking about MOOCs in this presentation. Open education is all about MOOCs and how we can deliver uh, information free of cost to majority of population. General practitioners and quality stamps produced by health institution or NGOs can help to uh, uh, distinguish between trustworthy and uh, uh, misleading information. Yeah, basically these are the things as a takeaway message. Again, I want to emphasize now MOOCs have become even more important for us because a given post-COVID era. So now we are living in post-COVID era. So we need to change our mindset and work as need of our hour. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shabir. Yeah, we, we have a uh, uh, couple minutes uh, to go. So uh, are there any questions from the audience? I like I like it. Uh, I like through, through slides or post slides. You will 
you're, you, you mentioned that uh, because uh, not only the MOOC because of uh, this pandemic. Exactly. Now we have, yeah, we have uh, some uh, emotion things or some big uh, psychological things that we need to <laughs> address. So I think it's, it's, it's very interesting that you have mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, and also I think uh, it's very important, especially for health information uh, uh, nowadays. Uh, there's a lot of misunderstanding or misleading uh, information, such as news or any kind of uh, uh, strange uh, information. Uh, yeah, it's, it, 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 it's important that we deliver the right information to, 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 to everyone. So you want to share some more uh, inside story of yours? For example, do you, do you have any uh, uh, any yeah. comments from your uh, learners that they give you a special uh, thoughts before? I mean, in your book. You are talking, you are asking me. In your book, book there's a lot of uh, elders that join uh, in your book. Yeah. Mm. So. Uh, um, yeah, exactly. are they are they give you any uh important uh stories that you want to share more so many so many so many because uh, the, yeah the point is a bit different because you see uh, the most of my books were before covid so definitely i had so much interaction that is my habit to interact with the learners so i learn a lot from my own learners because as I told, they are from different countries with different backgrounds. So we can definitely share our experiences. So definitely uh, in my aging uh, course, I had more than half of my learners above 55 years of age. So that was really fantastic to see such an elderly people taking the MOOCs and really uh, working on that. And most of the people already started buying, buying variable device and doing some physical activity in these four weeks, of course. So that was a very good impression for me. Yeah, it's good to know that uh, there's a lot of uh, learners that uh, learn after the MOOCs and then they have, in, have something in action, actually. <laughs> True, true, true. This is called like actionable uh, results of our teaching. Yeah, that's, that, that's even better to know uh, from the students, I mean, university students, they probably just learn the knowledge and then they, uh, they just like, or mm -hmm. they develop something else. But for the elderly, they are really using those things. All right, so uh, I think it comes up, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Shabia, for sharing your uh, experience. And uh, this uh, session will be uh, ending right now. So uh, 